Welcome to Electro Online. Now we're going to talk about quadratic inequalities and later on we'll talk about rational inequalities as well. But starting out with quadratic inequalities, we may want to ask the question, what is that? What is a quadratic inequality? Well, there's a lot of similarity to quadratic equations, so therefore we put one on the board, something we've just dealt with in previous chapters. So let's say we have the equation x squared plus x minus 2 equals 0, and we're asked to solve that equation. Well, we're looking for the value of x that makes the left side equal to the right side. And by now, if you've worked with quadratic equations, you can solve it using various methods. In this case, we decided to factor the equation. We found the solutions, and therefore we found the two points on the number line that represent the solutions, negative 2 and 1. So you can see that that is where the quadratic equation that instead of writing a zero there, we write a y there, we end up with a quadratic equation like this. Notice where it crosses the x-axis. That is where we find the solution to this equation where y is equal to zero. After all, the x-axis is where y is equal to zero. Now notice when we deal with quadratic inequalities, we can look at we can look at them like this, or we can look at them like this. Again, here we have a zero, there we have a y, and we'll see in just a moment what the difference is between the two. But notice, instead of having an equal sign, we have a less than an equal sign. So, what does that mean? What is the difference? Well, we're looking for all the values of x that make the left side less than or equal to zero. To do that, we find the critical points. We replace the inequality sign with an equal sign, so we end up with exactly this again. We find the two points on the number line that represent the solution to this equivalent equation, and now we notice that we have three regions on the number line. Also notice that I've drawn a dashed line for the equation y equals x squared plus x minus 2, which is the boundary of that inequality. So notice we have the two points on the number line that satisfy that inequality because if I change this to an equal sign, and there's an equal sign there, that includes that as a solution. But now we have three regions. We have a region to the left on the number line right here, all the values that are less than negative 2. We have a region in the middle between the two critical points, and we have a region to the right for all values greater for x greater than 1. And then if we put some values in, for example, when x equals 0, when x equals 2, when x equals negative 3, these are test values on the number line. This falls in the middle region, 2 falls in the region to the right, negative 3 falls in the region to the left, and so those are what we call test values. We plug those in the original inequality to see if it satisfies that inequality. When we let x equals 0, then we realize that the inequality is satisfied, the left side is less than zero, so therefore we can see that any point between the two endpoints here satisfy the inequality, therefore the entire region there, region two, satisfies inequality. The solution lies within this region. An infinite number of values, but at least as long as it's one or less, or negative two or greater. The regions outside do not satisfy by plugging some test values in there. We find out that the left side is not less than zero, and therefore we can see that those regions do not satisfy the inequality. But if we write a y instead of a zero, then notice now we want to find the region in the xy plane that satisfies inequality, not just the numbers on the number line, and that is where things are different. So again, we find the critical points by setting that equal to zero. So x squared plus x minus 2 equals 0, like we did before. We find the points right there. We then graph the line y equals, or maybe I'll just write it here, y equals x squared plus x minus 2. So we graph the line, and now again we have three regions in essence, or we have, maybe you want to look at it as two regions. We have the region inside, let's call it region 1, and with the region outside that line. And either the region inside or the region outside that graph satisfies that inequality, because now we have to also take into account all values for y. And so we can see that for everything inside the region here, the left side is less than or equal to the value of y. So you pick any point here, and you find x and y value, you plug those in, and that will be satisfied. You pick any point outside the region, x and y value, for example, 
x equals 3, y equals 0, you plug that in there and you find out that that inequality is not satisfied. So in this chapter, we're going to be dealing mostly with these kind of things. We just want to, we just care about the numbers on the number line that satisfied inequality. Notice we'll have a zero there instead of a y. Later on in a later chapter, we'll attack the more difficult situation where we're looking for all values of x and y that satisfied inequality. So that's when we're looking for regions like this. In this case, we're simply looking for regions on the number line that satisfied inequality. So we're going to use the technique that we learned before to find the critical points and then we'll test some test points to see which region on the number line satisfy the inequality. So if you wonder what is a quadratic inequality, it is simply a quadratic equation where the equal sign is replaced by a less than or greater than symbol or less than and equal to or greater than or equal to symbol in the in the equation. So the equation then turns into what we call an inequality and now we're looking for a region on the number line rather than one, zero or two specific points on the number line representing the solution. When I said zero points of course there's no such thing as zero points representing the solution. We're then probably talking about imaginary solutions. But hopefully they'll show you at least graphically the difference between all these various techniques and types of problems and so we're going to be concentrating mostly on this starting with quadratic inequalities and then later going on to rational inequalities. Remember the word rational, we're talking about something in the form of a fraction. We'll get to that later and this is how it's done.